my name is Mati Simon. <clears throat> I'm Checkmark's founder and CTO. As you can hear from my accent, I'm based off in Israel, much like uh, Ami from the presentation uh, earlier. So by the end of this day, you all speak Hebrew fluently, I guess. So, so a little bit about Checkmarks. Checkmarks does source code analysis or static application security testing. We have a product which analyzes your source code to find security vulnerabilities. I will be presenting WordPress security research that we released about six months ago at RSA. Uh, one of our investors is Salesforce.com and we're analyzing the code of their market to find if there are any applications that are vulnerable. I'm mentioning that because it will be tightly related to a, another part of my presentation towards the end of, of this session. Um, so the agenda would be a uh, new tricks all dog. Uh, all, well, there are some HTML and JavaScript secure, security risks like cross-site scripting, which are well known for over a decade now. Uh, however, with HTML5 and the new JavaScript uh, versions, these are uh, can be exploited in more dangerous ways. On top of that, HTML5 adds some new stuff that may lead to security vulnerabilities, and HTML5 in certain aspects is too good, and this uh, opens up a new set of vulnerabilities. So I'll talk about all these aspects uh, during this presentation. Are you able to see what's written on the screen? Okay, perfect. So uh, cross-site scripting, you all know what's cross-site scripting. I have an application which is vulnerable here to cross-site scripting. As you can see here at the title, there is a script, a alert high, and then, well, the projector here is not the best, but you can see the title high. That's easy, perfect. Now we can do something which is well known and to make it sticky. Let's say that I, I have one page in my application which is vulnerable to, to cross-site scripting, and the hacker wants to actually grab some data from a different page which is not vulnerable to cross-site scripting. So how can I make the cross-site scripting uh, sticky to stick to other pages in my application? Uh, it, that's fairly easy and it's well known. I open the, the page within an iframe. Then whenever the user actually browses the application, it's within the same iframe. And then there's a hosting page which actually monitors everything that happens uh, inside the iframe. Okay, if you take a look in here, so here the cross-site scripting opens up an iframe where the location is the very same page, okay? HTTP localhost of login ASPX and it opens up an iframe of the very same page with width and height of 100%. Let's see how it looks like. Okay, so it looks exactly the same. Uh, I left the border here on purpose. So you actually see that this page, this part, although it seems identical to the previous page, it's only an iframe. This means that whenever I log into that system, I still within the iframe and the host page is exactly the same, which is still able to monitor the inside page, although it's not vulnerable to cross-site scripting. So that's well known. There's nothing interesting in here. What's interesting is what I can do right now. Okay, so uh, with previous versions, I was able to actually uh, read the content of that page because it's within the very same site. HTML5 added some interesting stuff uh, related to the canvas, which basically allows us to take screenshot of the iframe. So basically the, the cross-site scripting is well known. HTML5 allows us to take screenshots of, the, uh, of that page. I will be using a, a, comp a component called HTML to canvas. That's, it's an open source application or open source code, which basically you point it to an iframe and it just takes a screenshot of that iframe. So I'll push that hijack page into the very same cross-site scripting. Okay, let's log out. Let me log in. Okay, and in this case, I removed the border. However, every five or 10 seconds, I added a new icon which represents the screenshot that was sent to the hacker. Okay, so let's open, right click, open in a new tab. And I have, here a P, I have here a PNG, okay, an image of the screenshot of a page which is absolutely not vulnerable to cross-site scripting. I use the stickiness feature from the previous uh, option just to take a screenshot of that page. 
Any questions so far? Okay. Now, since we have the source code of that component, of that take picture component, I've modified it a little bit. Um, okay. What I did is, while rendering the page, if it encounters um, an object of type password, just, just change its type into type of text, keep rendering, and at the end, return it back to be a password. This means that, let me log out, admin, and let's say hello, OWASP. A screenshot was taken, where the password is, well, is revealed, okay? For, sorry for my spelling mistake. Okay, so, and, and the user has absolutely no way to know because it seems like a valid password, but just while rendering the page in order to take the screenshot, we were able to modify it from a, a password into a text field, take the screenshot, and then turn it back into an input before the browser re-rendered the page. Okay? Okay, so that's why I said that, well, same old dog cross as scripting, well, but uh, we can do some interesting stuff with it. Okay, let me close some of the tabs. By the way, uh, most of my presentation will be live demos because I don't really believe in taped videos. This means that there are a lot of moving parts, so I hope that everything works fine. Uh, you know, that's, that's a trade-off. Oh, uh, what we can also do, uh, well, Okay, we can do a port scanning or network scanning through cross-site scripting. It existed before, earlier, but right now with HTML5, uh, we can do WebSocket scanning, which is much more reliable than uh, other techniques used. Okay, so for example, if I'm an outside attacker and I want to map your network environment, your firewall just prevents me and I see just one valid public IP. What I can do is that I can make you to run a script right through cross-site scripting, where the script itself runs on your browser and basically maps your network structure and sends me back uh, all that information. Okay, so I can create a script which I just push it to you. You will do all the mapping for me and send me the mapping. And then I can give you some more orders. For example, try to get into that server with these credentials or try to brute force. Basically, I can set a uh, an army of, you, you, you basically become one of my zombies inside your organization and I can just keep full control of, over what you're doing. I will not demonstrate that because we, right now we're on a public network of the city of, uh, and well, that might be some, a little bit illegal, so I won't do that right now. <laughs> I like my freedom. Okay, so. <laughs> Next thing, sandbox. Okay, uh, so I guess all of you are in, all of you know what same origin policy means, but I'll just for the sake of completeness, I'll repeat that. Basically, we saw that I have an I, I have a web page which has an iframe, and I am able to access that iframe, and this iframe is able to access my site. The reason it is possible is because both of us, both the hosting page and the iframe itself are hosted on the same server using the same protocol, HTTP, on the same port, etc. That's the same origin policy. If any of these parameters was any different, uh, we would have been blocked. That was perfectly fine until a few years ago, where all the SaaS ID just, you know, burst, and now there, for example, I mentioned salesforce.com, they're hosting uh, scripts which were written by third-party developers. If you're using Office 365, uh, you have your mailbox on the cloud. You can download plugins that execute on your mailbox and find different addresses or automatically schedule meetings for you. So anyone can write scripts, JavaScript, and to be hosted on that server, on that market. You can download these, or not actually download is a bad term. You can add these into your mailbox and to have them uh, do some work for you. And most of them are hosted by Microsoft.com. So the same origin policy notion is a bit different. It's, you might host uh, dangerous scripts on your server. Okay, uh, so HTML5 added a new feature called the sandbox. Okay, sandboxing means 
that I'm hosting an iframe, and although the iframe complies with the same origin policy, I still treat it as if it were as if it was hosted on a different server, and it does not enjoy the same origin policy benefits that we mentioned earlier. Okay, if an iframe is sandboxed by default, it is treated as a third-party website. So far, so good. Great. So the default of sandbox is empty and it applies all restrictions. Uh, it has several uh, parameters. Actually, each browser implements a different set of parameters, but that's the minimal set as defined uh, by the RFC. Okay, so I can set a sandbox to allow same origin. If I set an iframe, I set a sandbox and I add the allow same origin, this means that this iframe will be treated as, as if it was hosted on the same origin, which is actually uh, what it is. Uh, it will be treated exactly like the pre-sandbox versions, except for three different permissions, which need to be uh, given explicitly. Can you see anything on the projector because it's very bright? Yeah, okay. So, Allow same origin treats it as if it was the same origin, except for three uh, issues which needs to be add, which need to be added explicitly. Allow top navigation. Basically, it means you can change your father, your parents' location. Okay, so I have a, I am a parent. I have an iframe, and the iframe can tell the browser to switch to browse to a different page. Okay, so by default, it is turned off even if we allow the same origin. Allow forms allows the iframe to submit the hosting form and allow scripts. By default, an iframe, which is sandbox, won't be able to run any script, uh, except if we give it the allow script permission. So far, so good? Okay. So now let's see some interesting stuff. Okay, uh, on the top right hand side, I left the list so you can have it uh, as a, just to memorize. So. Let's start. I have just a simple iframe, no sandbox, and the hosted page um, basically pops up an alert. What will happen when I launch it? Okay, I have a page which has an iframe, not a sandbox iframe, just a simple iframe, and the iframe pops up an alert, tries to pop up an alert. What will happen? Will we see the pop-up or not? Okay, so by the raise of hands, how many say that I will see a pop-up? Okay, and how many of you don't think I will see a pop-up? How many of you think? Okay. <laughs> okay, so because uh, by default an iframe is very similar to what we've seen before, uh, and it is not sandboxed, clicking on clicking in here actually shows up the pop-up. Okay, we don't benefit from the new restrictions or new security features given by the sandbox. That's fine. Now we will do the exactly the same. Okay, just let me show you the previous one. The host, okay, uh, just ha has an iframe and the, and the embedded page just pop-ups and alert. Now I just changed the hosting page let me just, okay, I changed the hosting page, so I just added the sandbox capability, okay? Now what, what but the embedded page is exactly the same, well, what will happen right now? I'm sorry? It won't pop up, right? Okay, it doesn't pop up. And if we open the debugger, we see that here that the blocked script execution because the document frame is sandboxed. That's nice. Now let's I, I uh, let's do the very same embedded page that pops up the alert. I have an iframe with a sandbox, but the sandbox allows scripts and same origin. Okay, let's do that. Okay, that would be the host. Okay, I have an iframe with an ID. Okay, sandbox allows same origin and allows scripts. Okay, so will we see the pop up right now or not? Uh, okay, perfect. Okay, that was easy so far. Now, let's do something like that. 
the very same hosting page, okay, sandbox, allow scripts, allow uh, same origin policy, and the embedded page tries to navigate its parent. Will that work or not? It won't work, right. Why, do, why won't it work? Right, because we didn't have the allow top navigation capability, okay? That's the only thing missing in here, okay? So uh, the host will be something like allow same origin and allow scripts. And the embedded page basically tries to change the location of its parent. And it doesn't work. Okay, why it doesn't work, unsafe JavaScript attempt, etc., etc. That's fine. Now we go to the fun part. If I'm allowed to run script and the browser treats me as if I were at the very same origin, I can basically access my parent, right? To do anything except for navigating out. So I can get access to its DOM, document object model. So I can add new capabilities like navigating the top. Make sense? Let's see how it, how it looked like. Okay, the host allows same origin and allow script. The embedded page does something like that. It goes to its parent, looks for itself as an iframe, for its sandbox, and adds the allow top navigation capability. And then we can try to navigate to a different page. So by accessing my parent, I'm able to modify the DOM and to add some new capabilities. Make sense so far? So what will happen when I try to run this script? Will it navigate to Google? No, it doesn't. Why is that? Because Chrome is a good browser. <laughs> Unlike Firefox, which for the very same URL does navigate to Google, okay? Latest version of Firefox. Unlike Internet Explorer, which navigates to Google. Well, just to be fair, Firefox is the latest version and Internet Explorer is not the latest version. I think that's version eight or nine. Uh, the most recent versions are able to uh, handle this properly. And that's really interesting. Let's take a look here at, at Chrome, okay? It didn't work at Chrome, which means that Chrome is, is secured. And that's really interesting because when we try to inspect that element, we see, well, for those of you who can see, we see that the sandbox actually has the allow top navigation capability. The, the children was able to access the parent, to access its DOM, to modify the capability to allow top navigation, but Chrome is smart enough to know that this capability was added through a script of one of my uh, children, and it, won't, it doesn't allow me to, to go outside, where Firefox and Internet Explorer do not remember exactly who actually added this capability. Okay, so that's really interesting. The sad thing is we, as an application developer, we can do anything with that. There's, there's nothing we can do. If, we're a if we host a market, the most we can do is to allow scripts and to allow same origin, and we just need to hope that the browser that the developers or the, the users are using is a good browser. Uh, the RFC itself does not say anything whether it's allowed or forbidden, uh, so just by chance it, it doesn't work at Chrome. Any questions so far? Yeah. Yeah, that's a problem with RFC. Yeah. Okay, the question was whether the problem is with the RFC or with the browsers. Yeah, with RFC. Okay, well, according to the latest version that I saw, maybe it was modified since. I tried several stuff. It didn't work well for me. I hope, I'll be glad if you can give it a try and, you know, and, and, and do that. That will be really a nice paper to write about. Okay. Um, but 
Yeah, well, yeah, that's true. But the RFC says, well, allowed top navigation is something completely different. And, you know, it, not necessarily doing one plus one equals to, to well, to three. That's an extent. Okay. <clears throat> okay. And so, so far we've discussed some old stuff where with HTML, the HTML5, it, it's a bit different, okay? With the sticky, with, with the screen capture and the, and the, I'm sorry, uh -uh, and the, uh, and the scanning, the network scanning. Then we saw some new stuff related to HTML5, which didn't exist before, uh, which is the sandbox. Now the issue, the last thing is that, well, HTML5 JavaScript is too good. It means that uh, it should be used to keep only a UI logic on the client side and not business logic at the client side. However, people tend to store business logic at the client side and that's wrong, okay? I'll do the demonstration uh, with a simple game, a Pac-Man game, which is entirely written in JavaScript, which is really nice. You can all think what, are the, what would be the consequences in any other enterprise-related application. Um, just uh, something to think about. There is no, almost there is no good way of uh, sending over high scores or your game score to the server side in a secured manner. Uh, there are plenty of discussions over the internet and the more you think about it, there is almost absolutely no way to write a game, a JavaScript game, which at the end of the game pushes your results to the server uh, in a way that will won't be able, to, the hacker won't be able to manipulate the results, okay? We'll open up this discussion uh, towards the end of this demonstration and as I mentioned, there are plenty of moving parts in this part of the demo, so I hope everything works fine, including your city's network. So let's see. Okay, so that's just a nice Pac-Man with... Okay, nothing... Okay, that's a Pac-Man. And basically that's the world's largest, pa largest Pac-Man, so you can go to some more screens right through here, you can just move from one screen to the other. Okay, entirely written in JavaScript, which makes me happy. Okay, uh, let's just pause it for a sec. Okay, perfect. So, uh, HTML5 added the concept of local database, okay? A lightweight database. Usually the first thing you would do is to take a look at the database to see what the, uh, what the application decided to store there. So at the local storage, we see that they actually store my score, which you can see here at the top. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I can modify to, well, three, two, one. Hit F5, refresh the screen, and that's about it. Okay, so I was able to change my, my high score. Now, uh, so far it is hosted uh, locally. Uh, uh, so the next thing I would like to do is to actually see uh, what else is stored locally, uh, which is actually being sent to the database. So what object is always stored locally and always sent to the database with uh, every request? The cookie, right, that's correct. So let's, let me do the following. Um, let me just move on to a different page for a sec. Uh, <laughs> that's what we call moving parts, okay? Okay, so now let's pause it for a sec and take a look at the cookie. Uh, 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 resources, okay, let's do it, okay? Uh, Document.cookie. Okay, I see here the cookie. Let's decode it. Uh, okay, so we see here that for, pay, for the screen, minus 13, minus 25, uh, I ate 24 dots, I got 
88,000 points. I died zero times, good for me. Uh, and I ate 200 ghosts from a previous game. So I can very easily modify it into a different value, change the cookie, and then with the, with the next request to update everything that is sent to the, de to the server. Okay, so once again, it's, no, it's nothing new with JavaScript. It always existed. But the fact that I can do all that very easily on the client side means that the developers try to push a lot of, of business logic to the client instead of just UI logic. Now, the interesting part would be that we can actually modify the JavaScript itself. Now, with Chrome, uh, once the V8 engine downloaded the JavaScript and, and, well, compiled it or actually cached it, I'm unable to modify it. I can, but it's really difficult. So what I'll do right now is I will capture the traffic from the server back to the client, the script itself. I will modify it on the fly, and then we can uh, do some interesting stuff. So for that, first of all, I'll set up a proxy. OK. I'll turn on bar uh, in capture mode. And I will refresh. I will refresh with a uh, shift F5 because otherwise the script is um, cached. The downside of burp or any other proxy is that it's really slow. So we'll take, uh, okay. So we captured the JavaScript. Okay, we got it in here. I will just copy paste. I'll show it in a minute what I copy paste into it in here. I'll push that code into just a sec. I'm looking for something. Mm -mm. Uh, OK, I'll push that code into here. And then let's hit uh, forward. Let's get back into here. Mm -mm -mm -mm. No luck so far. Okay, so let me let me retry that. Sorry. Meanwhile, I'll just show you the code that I tried to push. Uh, that if uh, if I hit a ghost. Uh, then change its state into fright. You know, when you take the pill, the, the ghost is, is afraid and then you can eat it. So I constantly change their state into fright mode. So uh, once again, let me find this in here. Da, 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 da. Okay, intercept off. Oh, I forgot to hit the forward button. I think I forgot to hit the forward button, so I'll give it one last chance, otherwise we'll just... Okay, so, well, if you've noticed, well, yeah, I'm not afraid anymore. So, <laughs> Now, it's really fun because each time I eat a ghost, um, my score doubles. So very quickly, I hit an integer overflow and fun stuff. <laughs> okay. So, well, so that's what, well, obviously, that's what you can. So, okay, you got the idea. So, so all I have to do is just to keep waiting and to get some. Okay, so that, oh, now it will ring forever. Okay, so you got the idea, okay? So once again, nothing new, but the idea is that everything is hosted on the client and I can very easily modify it. 
I can modify the business logic of your application. All of you, I'm sure all of you know that, but your developers not necessarily know that. So you should make sure that there is no business logic hosted on the client. Any questions so far? Okay. Uh, now, last but not least, it's a demonstration of something that works, sadly, 25% of the time I demo it. Uh, so I hope we'll get the chance to see it working. Uh, it's pretty complicated. <clears throat> Let me go back to the presentation. Okay, so for the next trick, I will need a volunteer for a minute. For, yeah, come over, please. Why? So basically, that's going to be very simple. Okay, come over here. You see, there's a button titled as one. Okay. Now, once you click it, you'll see the title. You'll see button two, three, and four, and five. And the idea is that you have to click this button as fast as possible. Just okay. So go ahead. Okay. So it didn't work. Well, thank you very much. Oh, okay, because you're... Yeah, 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 that's it. So let me show you what I wanted to demonstrate. Uh, as I said, it works fine for about 25, 30% of the times, which is good enough if you mass, uh, if you blast a lot of users. Basically, the idea is that... You see my mouse cursor? Well, that's not my cursor. My cursor is about 300 pixels on top of that. I just present a GIF there. This means that when I try to hit the one, well, basically my mouse is over here. When I hit the two, my mouse is around here. And when I try to hit the three, it will be the allow button to keep track of your location. Okay? And then four, just a sec. I didn't I wanted to show you something else. Let's start from the from the beginning. Okay, one, two, three, four. Okay. So well, it didn't perf it didn't work perfectly fine. But if you take a look here at the console, well, it seems like oh, because of the uh, sorry, the proxy was still on and Google does not serve me because the certificate is not valid because it's an HTTPS. So I need to turn off that. Okay, my bad. So let's start from the beginning. Okay, so one two, three, four, five, and that's me, okay? Because I just allowed the site to start tracking my camera and uh, microphone, okay? Now, obviously, I didn't have to put it on screen. I can just send it to the hacker directly. I know that my mom wouldn't notice the small banner uh, whether she allows anything or not, okay? She would just play that excellent game, okay? So let me just clear that, F5, okay? So the, the, the message was there from the beginning. No, no one or, well, 25% of the people don't notice that eventually, okay? And then when you play, you just click. So once again, it's very similar to the click jacking, but instead of having a transparent layer, I just move the cursor to places where I want it to be. Uh, uh, but the impact of that with HTML5, the fact that I can, you know, start listening to your microphone, start capturing your, your camera, following your location. Okay, well, I, didn't sh I didn't show that. But here, I just present your location uh, more or less 58 meters. Okay, so that's the resolution, so I'm able to keep track of you. Okay, 58 meters. I have no idea how much it is in yards or... From Google, Google provides provides this for you. I'll show you 
Okay, if you're asking, okay, so that's basically the source code where I move the mouse here. Okay, so. So yeah, using the Wi-Fi, it's able to determine it, and that, all these are services provided by Google. Okay. <clears throat> so um, that's basically it, I think. That, okay. Getting back to the very first slide, new tricks, all the dog. Okay, cross-site scripting, uh, clickjacking. I think you can do interesting stuff. New stuff in HTML5, and the fact that developers feel that JavaScript is a good, client-side JavaScript is a good platform to write business logic is maybe a bad idea. Any questions? Thank you very much for hosting me here.